Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleaware.org. Hello and welcome to this Friday Tipping Postcast. I'm Muddy Plow. Joined in the studio by Graham Rodway. We have Paul Keeley on the line as well as Nilo Riley from Paddy Power. We've got plenty to get stuck into. We've got ITV Racing at Weatherby and Ascot this weekend. Good action at Down Royal and also later on in the show we'll have some input more on the Breeders' Cup which we touched on on Monday's show. But I'm keen for us to get going. So we'll start off with Weatherby and the 120 which is the Bet365 handicap chase. Over two miles, three and a half furlongs and uh, does West of the Bridge lead your market, Niall? He does, Maddie. Yeah, he's our four to one favourite. Cap Gary is five to one. Cougars go eleven to two. Just don't ask six to one. Valhalla seven one. Oak Vintage seven one and eight to one bar. Yeah, interesting race to start us off with, G Rod. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I had a look at through last year's results and um, Phil Kirby had a fantastic day uh, last year on, at this meeting. He had a treble um, and at this time of year, it, it's kind of down to a bit of which horses are, are the most forward, isn't it? It's not yeah. always, um, you know, the best. It's the ones that are the fittest. And uh, uh, having seen that Kirby had such a great day last year, it wouldn't surprise me if he's targeted this meeting again. And I uh, quite fancy his runner here, Oak Vintage. Um, he produced one of his best efforts at the course last season on Boxing Day. He was second behind Willie Boy in quite a strong race over the course and distance. Uh, he's been disappointing since, but he's dropping nicely down the weights uh, on quite an attractive mark now, 113. And if he can return to that form he showed over Christmas, I think he can win this one. OK, now what price is he? Just remind us. Yeah, he's our, he's 7-1 at the moment. He's actually uh, the one I'm going to tip as well myself. Um, I think myself and Graham, that's... Two races were the same one so far, and we'll hear about the rest later on. But um, yeah, Oak Vintage, as Graham said, that, down to a mark of 113. I've been rated as high as 130 at one point last season. The key piece of form was second to Willie Boy uh, on Boxing Day at the course over the di over the distance last year, up 127. I reckon they probably targeted this race. He had a prep at Stratford over a trip too far. He got dropped another few pounds for that run. So yeah, that's Oak Vintage looks the value for me in the race as well. OK, so two uh, confident selections then. Keels, who are you going to side with? Uh, they've hit the nail bang on the head. Uh, yeah, I was I was looking at him this morning and I thought, wow, what a price. I think he'll end up, I think he'll end up favourite. I mean, like you said, Kirby does tend to target this meeting. Uh, and, you know, he's not just mildly well handicapped on that form. He's the best handicapped horse in the, in, by an absolute mile if he returns to it. That was off a mark of 127. Uh, he was rated 130 in October last year. He's running off 113 now. And when he ran at Stratford last time, he did an half jump well. Like, you know, it was just the perfect prep over a trip too far. Uh, dropped another three pound. He will take a hell of a lot of beating. OK, you mentioned Phil Kirby there and one of his leading lights is going to run in the 155. It's the Bet365 Mayor's Hurdle, a listed race. She won it last year. That's Lady Buttons, of course, but arguably a tougher task this time around. Some really interesting horses in there, including Vision de Puy, who won at Perth last time, and Indefatigable, who was fifth in the Silver Trophy at Chepstow. So some nice form lines clashing. Uh, Niall, again, just uh, read off the betting for us. Yeah, Lady Buttons are 15 8 favourite. Vision Dupuy, as you said, is 130. Indefatigable is 7 2. Zambella, 9 2. Diamond Gate, 16. Hidran, 20. Mween of All in 20. And Aoi Minute, 25. So some tricky names in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm quite interested in one at a big price, but I'll let you go first, Keels, this time. Lady Buttons, do you think she can do it again? Uh, well, you know, on, on all known form, she's the best in the race by a mile. I mean, she's miles better over fences, but, you know, she's still. She's still got the highest rating of these by a fair way, other than you know the the guesswork that the that the BHA have done with Zambella of Nigel Twist and Davis, who's, who's two from two in France. We don't know how strong that form is. Uh, Vision to Pi is going to need to be a lot better than she was at Perth, I think. And Lady Buttons does go well fresh. She travels really strongly. You know, I mean, it's not a race I'm going to bet in because there are unknowns. Um, but I, th I certainly think she's the right favourite. Yeah, the market certainly uh, favours Lady Buttons. It's easy to see why. G Rod, do you think it's a simple case of her winning it again? Yeah, I thought Lady Buttons was one of the better two to one shots I've seen for a while. Um, 
she's just better than these, I think. Um, and she likes this track. She, she won the race last year. And uh, really a, a, a key asset is that she travels so strongly yes. uh, through her races. And a sharp track like Weatherby, I think, plays to her strengths quite well. Uh, Indefatigable got within a neck of her, I think, at Doncaster. But if you go back and watch that race, I mean, Lady Buttons is absolutely swinging off the bridle at the final uh, flight and goes clear on the running. And you think she's going to win easily and she just ties up near the line yeah. and, and Indefatigable closes her back down. So um, that was on the same terms as here. I see no reason why Indefatigable has got any chance of reversing the form uh, around this sharper track. Vision Depoy didn't jump very well at Perth and will need to massively improve and the rest of them just don't lo look good enough. Although obviously Zambella could be anything, but I'd be disappointed if Lady Buttons doesn't win. Yeah, I think um, keeping an eye on the future, I think that's Smealing Orlin who uh, Niall mentioned. I think from a handicapping perspective, when she next goes in a handicap, she could be quite interesting. So maybe keep an eye on her here. Um, she's sort of four pound lower, I think, than her last winning mark. Obviously, this isn't a handicap, it's a listed race, but maybe wise to keep an eye on her. Uh, Niall, again, is it going to be three votes for Lady Buttons then? Uh, no, I actually, I disagree with Graham. I actually like Indefatigable. Um, I think she's got a very good chance of beating Lady Buttons. I mean, no doubt the Lady Buttons is a better horse, but she's having her seasonal reappearance. And just towards the end of last season, she just started to show signs of, of, a, of a tough year. I think she might just need this run. She's given four pounds to Indefatigable. I know she was given four pounds in the run at Doncaster, but she got pretty close. Indef Indefatigable is, a, is, is only a six-year-old, so she could be improving. And she's had a prep for this race. So just at the prices, I'm going to side with her. Um, yeah, that's Indefatigable. Yeah, I think she ran a really good race in that silver trophy. I think it could produce quite a few winners. Uh, good, good handicap to start off the season with. The 305 uh, features another horse who ran in that race, and that's Bally Andy. It's the Bet365 hurdle, the grade two over three miles. And as I mentioned, Bally Andy, he's stepping up to this trip uh, against, you know what I mean, Harry, an interesting affair this, given there's four pounds between them on ratings. Yet, yeah, you know what I mean, Harry, carries a six pound more than Bally Andy. Um, and a favourite hasn't actually won this race since 2011 when Restless Harry was victorious. So could sort of give us a clue as to what's going to happen in the staying hurdle division this season. No Paisley Park here, of course. But uh, take us away with the betting, Niall. Uh, yeah, so Ballyandy's are 2-1 to one favourite. You know what I mean? Harry is 9-4. to four. The World's end 9-2. to two. Le Broy 7-1. Lord Napier 8-1. to one. Two Tafts 10-1. to one. And T's component lad is 33-1. to one. OK, Niall, I'll stick with you now uh, for this one. Uh, who do you think is going to come out on top? Uh, yeah, I'll probably chance the world's end here for Tom George. Uh, he was a bit disappointing towards the end of last season. Uh, so Tom George showed what he can do with a horse after break with Black up there on Thursday, who was very, very impressive. Um, now, I had a big concerns for Bally Andy over the trip. I just don't think he'll get it. Um, you know what I mean? Harry's an 11-year-old giving away a penalty who has bled in the past, so I couldn't be having him. So It's more default that I'm landing at the world's end, but he's actually got quite a good record on good ground. Which he'll, well, it's going to be good to soft tomorrow, but it should be in his favour. And um, I think he might get an easy lead if he decides to dictate here. So that could also be a positive. And yeah, just at the prices outside of him. Okay, that's one at a slightly bigger price than uh, G Rod. I mean, I found this quite an interesting race. You're getting some horses like Le Brule and maybe even the World's End that now I mentioned. I'm not sure if this he'll necessarily be really revved up for this, but a few down the bottom who are going to use this as preps and getting handicapped for races over fences. But uh, it's a good race, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was a horrible little race to bet in, really, because <laughs> Bally Andy, we just don't know if he's going to stay. I mean, if Bally Andy stays, I think he'll win. But uh, he's like two to one favourite and there's a massive question mark about him getting the distance. So at the price, you yeah. couldn't take the risk. You know what I mean, Harry's carrying a penalty and he's getting no younger and he's a short price as well. And the World's End, I think, would win this on his chase form. Um, but we haven't seen him over hurdles for a season and uh, I just wonder if this might be a prep for something else. Yeah. Uh, I, I fancy Le Broy. Um, now... Not strongly, and, and obviously you could argue the same thing about the World's End, about Le Broy, that maybe this is a prep for a return to fences. However, he was in the three-mile handicap chase um, at Ascot, and they've decided to come here instead. And I just thought, well, you know, if they, if they were thinking about running that three-mile handicap chase first time up, that maybe they had him fairly well forward. Yeah. Um, and uh, Richard Johnson takes the ride. Now, obviously, he's got loads to find on, on hurdles form with him, but he did win the uh, four-miler at... Um, at Cheltenham on soft ground, so he definitely stays, uh, and I thought he might be the value bet. 
Okay, uh, interesting. Two different selections so far. Keels, uh, do you think Bally Andy's got any chance of staying this trip? I mean, well, his handicap form's pretty good, isn't it? I echo the worries about him. I wasn't 100% sure that, you know, I thought two, two mile five was as far as he wanted to go. I mean, it was in, it was in competitive races, to be fair. Um, but the thing is, I mean, the latest Met Office forecast suggests it's going to rain heavily tonight for about four hours and going to, going to rain on and off throughout the day tomorrow. It could be borderline heavy ground by the time they run at 3.05. So he's really going to have to stay. Uh, and I would I wouldn't fancy him to do so. Now, you know, you know what I mean, Harry is an 11 year old under a penalty. Um, he, he won a grade one last year uh, at the end of the season, but he still ended up the season low, rated lower than he started it, you know, and it's not a great surprise that a horse approaching 12 is going to be slightly on the downgrade. So I think he's got it to do under, under a penalty. He needed to run first time last year as well. And he ran to a race of his rating of 148. And if he does that tomorrow under, under, under a six pound penalty, he's got no chance. So I think you have to take him on. Yeah. Uh, and the one I like uh, the most is Le Broy will be being warmed up for the Labrix Trophy, I'd have thought, um, over fences. The one I like is Lord Napier. He was just really, really progressive over hurdles last year uh, up to a staying trip. Um, on my nine lengths at Sandown in February, I was there that day. He, he beat one of the horses I backed and he just won really, really easily. Um didn't really appreciate the drop back in trip at Utox at only six next time. But I thought first effort straight into grade one company at April and finishing fifth uh, to if the cap fits was pretty good effort. You know, and he did finish ahead of, you know, the likes of Sam Spin. He finished ahead of the World's End, Holstone. And you know what I mean, Harry. He was obviously badly, badly out of form. And, you know, he's a double figure price still. And I just think that's daft. I think he's got a serious shot. Yeah. You've tipped him before, haven't you? He's a quite a yeah, pal of I'm yours, actually, Lord uh, Napier. Well, I just thought that, you know, he's, he's, he's better than his mark. Uh, and yeah, I backed him at a big price at that entry race. I haven't actually had one, ever won any money on him, but I still think he's a six year old. He's the youngest horse, and one of the youngest horses in the race. And I think he's got a major shot at improving again. And if he does, he's going to be right on the heels of him. Okay, so sort of taking on the top two, the approach there in that three mile grade two. Uh, let's go on to the feature then at Weather, Weatherby. It's the 340, the Bet 365 Charlie Hall chase. And this is a really interesting race as well. La Bagawa, of course, the mare leading a lot of markets. She's actually two from two at the track, but they both came over hurdles. You had last year's winner, definitely red in there. Bally Optic, he was really impressive when we saw him at Chepstow recently. Um, and Niall, I will go to you for your betting. Uh, yeah, so the bag of raw is our nine to four favourite. Definitely red is four to one. Elegant escape five to one. Bally optic six to one. Aso eight to one. Topville Ben eight to one. And Molly D Molly D Dali is nine to one. Yeah, I was quite interested looking at the ratings for this race because the top rated is actually Aso on one six eight, and the next one in is definitely red at one sixty. But there is that question mark over Aso over three miles, isn't there? So I presume that's why he's such a big price. He's even getting two pounds from definitely red as well. So uh, we'll start off. Let's start off with La Bagawa uh, G Rod. I mean, it seems that she's sort of got a specialist set of conditions, but she she jumps really well. She's always been sort of a high class animal. Um, do you think she can take this against sort of really good opposition? Well, yeah, tough and genuine, very consistent, jumps well, likes flat tracks. Um, and this this should be ideal really for her. Uh, handles a bit of cut in the ground. Um, and she she goes very well fresh. I think she's won virtually every time, uh, first time up. So uh, there's a lot to like about her. The only thing is, is that she definitely needs to improve to win this race. I mean, mm. she her form that from last season, which albeit is in novice company and she is entitled to improve, you know, still leaves her quite some way off the best of these, the likes of ASO and and definitely Red. And, you know, if you're backing also uh, what's going to be a fairly short price, I think you're entitled to hope that she might have the best form in the race. And I'm not entirely convinced that she does. Mm. Um, as a result, I was happy to take her on. And, and I was torn between two. Obviously, I'm riding the Phil Kirby bandwagon. So um, I think Topville Ben could run well, but it's a single figure price. I've got an awful lot to find. So um, I, I fancy definitely Red, who yeah. won the race last year. I read Brian Edison's stable tour, and he said, uh, you know, we're, we're basically lining him back up for another tilt at the Charlie All Chase. He said, no, I expect we'll have him very straight for that first time out. Um, so this is definitely pretty much going to be definitely Red's Gold Cup. Um, and then he goes on to say, you know, I know he's, he's rising um, 11, he said, but um, I think he can have another really, really good season. So um, he, he obviously thinks that definitely Red is still um, in his peak form at, at the age of 10. Um, and we know for sure that he, he is good enough to win the race and he is going in there in peak form. So uh, at more than double the price of Lobago Roy, I'll back definitely Red. 
Do you know what? I'm 100% with you. Uh, Brian Ellison, he's in red hot form, isn't he? Forrest Behan won that old Roan for him. Form figures of 2 1 3 1 at the track. Uh, of course, he won it last year. He also won the Roland Merrick at the track. Pretty versatile with regards to ground. So, if we do get that deluge that uh, Keels was referring to, I mean, he was six to one earlier in the week, and I'm sort of kicking myself for, for not backing him. But it is an interesting race with a couple of the novices coming forward. Uh, Keels, what did you think? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it Look, given the forecast, like Warren Greatrix was talking about running in the, in the Colin Parker Memorial at Carlisle, and he didn't enter at the same time. So I'm assuming he's coming here, but I wouldn't make her much more than even money to run if they get the rain because he does, she doesn't want it that soft. She's going to have to run an absolute career best on ground that she, she doesn't particularly like. So at the prices, I cannot have her at all um because she does need to improve now obviously the one i like is top v ben and he obviously needs to improve as well because on on official figures he's one of the worst in one of the worst horses in the race but he's one of those he might just be to weather be what bristol demai is to haydock because he ran he ran here over fences twice last year and he won by 37 lengths uh and 46 lengths uh and, you know, he wasn't beating absolute mugs. You know, when he first run, the, the, the runner-up that he was giving £6 to was 64 favourite and rated 137. Uh, and, then, and then he beat Sam's Gunner the next time, giving giving £10. He was rated 134 and he won by 37 lengths uncharged. And Phil Kirby knows how well he goes here and he will have him absolutely bang fit, whereas other horses are going to be prepped for something else. I mean, definitely Red might well be might well be fit, but he's got he's got the penalties to carry as well. Uh, so it's not as it's it's not as straightforward as you would imagine for the for the more established chasers. I doubt Asa will stay given the trip. Yeah. Um, and I just don't really trust Bally Optic, and I just think Top V Ben will go out, make the running, uh, and he might just be very very hard to catch. I think he's a good price. Yeah, you mentioned the novices obviously having something to find with last year, but I think the general consensus was last year they were very strong. Uh, Delta work we'll talk about in a bit. We had mm. top of the game, we had lost in translation, and he ran a cracker at Aintree, didn't he, Top Bill Ben? He did, yeah. He was only beating just over six lengths. I mean, you know, at the start of the season, it's never proven how good the novices are. We think they're very strong, but, you know, we've thought that before yeah. and it hasn't turned out that way. So we'll have to wait and see. But I do share I do share the optimism that most people have that it was a good season. And that was a good run by Top V, Ben. So uh, if he's if he's in that sort of form, you know, beating six lengths by Lost in Translation, I mean, I, you know, I would make Lost in Translation clear five to win this. Um you know, running off 11 stone as, as top rule Ben is. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think he'll go off shorter than the, the current best price of around about nine to one. I think he is, uh, eight with Paddy. I think, I think he'll go off a fair bit shorter than that. And I just got a sneaky feeling that Warren Great Trex will draw stumps with Labago Rye if it gets really deep. Yeah, possibly that could happen. Uh, Niall, who are you siding with? Uh, yeah, I find it hard to see Labago Rye beaten here. Um, this just seems to be her time of year. Uh, she's a very good record fresh, which she's also two from two at Weatherby, as you said yourself. So the track obviously suits. Her form obviously ties in at loss and translation from last year. I think um, talk is cheap as well. Like that form has worked out really well from them Newbury novice races. Um, yeah, I just think she's the best horse in this race. Definitely red. I know Graham said he'd probably be prepped for this. I just think he's a little bit slow. And the likes of Labagara, who can jump fast and it's just a quick enough horse, could get, get him out of his comfort zone. Elegant Escape, I think, is quite slow as well. Valley Optic is jumping and let him down. Ace, so I didn't think would stay. Top Hill Ben, I see the positives, but I just don't think he's good enough. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with the bag of raw here. OK, interesting, contrasting opinions then. We're going to take a quick break now before we look at Ascot and Down Royal. Two cracking cards don't go anywhere. So, does an each-way bet mean that my horse has to do part of the race in the reverse? Everyone loves a newbie. That's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games. New Paddy Power Games customers only. One per customer. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Begumbleware.org. Welcome back to this tipping postcast. As promised, we're going to look at Ascot's card first and then get on to Down Royal. Really, really good action. Uh, this The 135 is the Ascot underwriting chase over two mile three. A ping shoe in here, very good novice hurdler. He's been running a little bit better over fences, um, but some really good, interesting horses in here. And, and Niall, run us through your market. Uh, yeah, so ping shoes are seven to two favourite. Jamie George is eleven to two. Darling Maltics eleven to two. Earl of the Cotswolds thirteen to two. Diablo de Civil is seven to one. Servero Mix seven to one. Doctor Deck seven to one and twelve to one bar. Yeah, I'm quite interested in one here now, but I'll let you go first. So it's quite a few sort of funny horses in this. I wasn't quite sure how to sum it up. 
Yeah, I agree, Maddie. It's, it's a tricky race. Now I kind of came down on one at a price. It's called On the Slope. Oh it's no, Chris. you've stole my horse. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we were just looking big price to be here at 14. Now he was fourth in reappearance at Utoxeter. So I actually think that was quite a good race. And if you watched the race back, I, I know you probably did. He, um, he ran a cracker. Like he was leading at the second last or the last. He jumped really well. I just don't think he's the strongest finisher. And this is a slight drop in trip. I think that could have been two, two mile five. This is two mile one, isn't it? Sorry, this is two mile three, yeah. Yeah. So I think that, that'll that help him. Um, He might be suited by going right-handed as well. And just in some of his last season's form and novice hurdles, he ran into some good horses. I just think in this field, I didn't like a lot of them. And as you said, yeah, you could just pick holes in a few of them. I, I thought he looked a big price. And he looked well handicapped, yeah, on the slope. Yeah, we're certainly reading from the same him sheet. A bit gutted there. Wasn't expecting anyone to pick him. But as you mentioned, that fourth that you talked to was a good effort. Uh, jumped really well. Seemed to enjoy himself out in front. Eric LaRouge won. He's a good horse. Not that piece, again, second at Cheltenham since. So that's a boost for the foreman. Rocco, who fell at the last, he actually won at Stratford yesterday. So although he obviously didn't wasn't involved in the finish, I think it's good novice form. And although he's got something to find in this company. I think he's one of the most interesting horses in the race. So I'm with you on on the slopes. Uh, G-Rod, I'll go to you next. Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, at this time of the year, I'm kind of a, a bit more interested in in which horses are going to be uh, right at their peak um, for the day um, rather than those who, who will be um, going yeah. forward. And, um, you know, in order to try and do that, I do, I do often go back over the past few years and, and see sort of which trainers have, have had their horses well forward at this time of year. And it just caught my eye that Gary Moore um, seems to target this Ascot meet. And I think yeah. he had three winners at, at two years ago. He certainly had a winner there uh, last year. Um, and he's got Di Diablo de Civila, um, first time out for the stable, um, used to be with Nick Williams. Yes. Um, and, and I just think that he'll have this horse right at his peak first time out. And he's got a bit more experience than a lot of these novices. Some of them are coming in, making their chasing debut, whereas Diablo de Civila is a second season novice. He's got some pretty strong form. I think he was second at Exeter last season behind St. Million, third behind uh, another one of Gary Moore's, Larry at Sandown, both on right-handed, stiff track, similar courses to um, Ascot. Um, and I think that Diablo de Civila will be um, primed for this first time up. Yeah, I did have a look at him. I thought he was very interesting. Gary Moore, as you say, does tend to target this meeting with a lot of his horses. I think Benatar won it, didn't he, a couple of years ago. And really classy horses. So interesting he's now got Diablo de Sivla. Uh, Keels, what did you make of this one? Yeah, tight little, tight little race, obviously. Um, it's a funny one, isn't it, in a Yeah, way? I mean, a nine-year-old pink shoe blundered his way around Newton Abbott twice, got beat, got beaten at odds on both times. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why he's fav, to be honest. I mean, he's obviously very talented, but I mean, if you blunder your way around those tiny fences at Newton Abbott and then come to Ascot, you're asking for trouble, aren't you, surely? So, uh, I the, the, the one I like most is uh, Savaro Mix, uh, trained by Oliver Sherwood. Um, now, he he made his chase debut at Fontwell in May, and he jumped like a stag, and he won very easily. Um, and he came back after uh, uh, after four months off, and, and he was a beaten favourite um, back at Fontwell. But he was out to his right a bit there, at virtually at virtually every fence. Not dramatically, he still jumped like a stag on the first circuit, but he belted a couple on the second. Uh, and I think he's only a little horse, and that was in a handicap under eleven stone twelve. Uh, and I just think carrying a stone less and a better race will suit him. I mean, he did jump like us. He does jump really, really well. He can be a bit keen, so, you know, stiff track might be an issue. But I think, uh, you know, he, he he matched his career best on RPRs after the break, and he's always come on a fair bit for a run uh, in his previous seasons, and he's only five. Um, I think he's got a lot of improvement left in him. He's the one I was side with, but, I mean, it is a tight little race. It certainly is a difficult race, Keel. So we'll move on to the 210 next, which is the Burn Group Handicap Chase, a listed race over two miles and a furlong. And G Rod, you were talking about sort of trainers who tend to do well at this time of year. Dr. Richard Newland's one that I think always gets his horses quite raring and ready to go. He had a good Cheltenham, didn't he, uh, at the showcase meeting. And he's got Kate Delan in here, won this race with Vosne Romane last year. Real eye catcher last time out at Chepstow behind the Bay Birch. And I believe he heads your market, Niall. Uh, yeah, Kai Delanis are four to one favourites. Spare Deck is eleven to two. Ballywood six to one. Clondalk Castle six to one. The last day is six to one. Cape nine and ten to one bar. Okay, yeah, uh, G Roller, go to you first this time. 
Uh, yeah, I, uh, as you say, I mean, I, I looked through last year and, and Richard Newland was on the score sheet and he no doubt will have had uh, Cade uh, Delern laid out for, for this. But I, I, I fancy the Orcs that, um, that finished second to him in November at the track last year, Sperodek. Uh, he was running off a mark of 151 that day, um, and he, he's really well handicapped off a one pound lower mark. Um, and he loves Ascot, two miles yeah. soft ground. That's his bag, spare Proper tear away, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he likes to blast off, and uh, he jumps very well when he's uh, flying along in front, usually, fingers crossed. Now, I mean, he's had th uh, three runs since that uh, excellent effort on his reappearance at the track last year. But, I mean, you can forgive them all. I mean, he was fourth in the desert, walking behind Altior. Obviously, he had absolutely no chance in that race. Um, he fell behind top notch, and that was over two and a half at Kempton. That's not his trip. And last time out, he actually didn't run too badly in the Imperial Cup over hurdles when, again, he blasted off in front and was Very still banging there. Very soft ground, wasn't it, that day? Yeah, he was still banging there in a straight. And he, you know, he's a much better chaser than he is hurdler. I mean, to me, he just looks particularly well handicapped. Sean Bowen's riding uh, very well at the moment as well. And I'm expecting Sperodek to make them all go from the front. OK, good, exciting horse to watch that Sperodek. I'm sure it's a race we'll all be looking forward to. Uh, Niall, who's your selection? Uh, yeah, I was between two here in a Kai Delan and Clondall Castle. Um, the one I'd probably back is, is Clondall Castle. Um, I just thought Kai Delan kind of he looks a bit the right price at four to one. Um, yeah, Clondall Castle. He was a slow burner last season. He just took a while to get used to the fences, but when he did, he he started jumping really well. He went in two handicaps very impressively. Uh, they ran him in the Arkle instead of uh, taking advantage of his mark of one hundred and forty four, and he ran as well as could be expected. They went crazy hard up front in the Arkle. He chased the pace finished very tired and, and I think that that race had its effect on him at, at the entry next time when he was well beaten behind Arnua. He comes back here after break. Now he might need the race but like I said earlier about, about Tom George with Black Off, you might have him ready here and off a mark 144 he's definitely the one I think is the best handicap in the race so yeah I'm just going to side with him. Okay, Cheltenham Festival form, as you mentioned there. That's the first of the two listed races we're going to look at but before we move on to the next kills we couldn't go without getting your selection. Who did you come down on? Uh, yeah, well, I do like I do like Sperodek again. Um, same reasons as Graham. I mean, he went really, really hard last year at Ascot on his return, and you know he had everything well beaten apart from his Cadula, who who is you know I think is eight pound worse off now, uh, and he does tend to go well fresh. Sperodek does tend to go well here. Um, only worry is Clondor Castle can chase the pace as well. There could be a bit of pace in there, and they might go too hard again. But but you know it'll take a good one to keep up with him um, if he's ridden in the normal style. Uh, uh, from the off, uh, and I think he, he has to go close. But I take Noah's point about Clondor Castle. He is one of the most interestingly handicapped horses if he's ready. Yeah, he certainly is. So Kiel's keeping his powder dry for that one, but we have a good handicap hurdle to get stuck into now. It's the 245, the Sodexo handicap hurdle, our other listed race over just shy of two miles. And uh, some interesting, sort of unexposed horses from last season knocking heads here. Nyla, I think Aj Dali, he's the head of your market. He is, yeah. He's a, he's our five to one favourite. Uh, Den Mead is six to one. Lisp is thirteen to two. Did they leave you out two? Is seven to one. Red Force one seven to one. Jolly's cracked at eight to one. Gumball eight to one and twelve to one bar. Okay, now I'll, uh, as I said, a lot of these you don't know really where you stand with them just yet. But is there anything that's taken your eye? Uh, yeah, I really like one here. Now he's he's a little bit of a risky proposition as towards the end of last season he just he didn't really seem in love with the game. But uh, it's Nordic combined. It's trained by David Pipe. So yeah, he caught me in novice hurdles last season in Newbury, running on really well in, in some good races. He was behind Rat Hill. Another occasion, he was behind Champagne Court at a at Linkfield. Like proper decent horses, and because of that, he got a high enough mark last year of 133. Um, and then he, he just yeah, in handicaps, they, they stuck a visor on him twice, and I don't think he really took to it. He got lit up in the Betfair hurl at Ascot last year. But he's now back down to a mark of 123 into this race, and I really, the more I looked through this race, I really didn't think it was strong at all. And I think he could have a fair bit in hand. They, they've stuck a tongue tie on him here, which might help. I'm not really sure. Um, and they, they've left the visor off, which is definitely a good thing. Now, if he can jump all right, I definitely think he's on a good mark of 123. I've seen 20 to one around. I think we're 14. Uh, I thought he'd be worth back in each way. Okay. Interesting one there. A big price. Uh, Keels, who did you like? Yeah, there's two. I mean, I've backed... Um... Did they leave you at two? I just think he's a bit of a. I just think he might be a bit of an Ascot horse. He obviously 
bolted yeah. up on the all weather uh, in a bumper on his debut. He beat Thomas Darby uh, Asker, um last year as well. Um, clearly didn't stay when when punted up to three mile at, at, at Galway. Uh, and I just think it might be you know this might be the race for him just because it's Asker. But I'm in total agreement with Niall on this Nordic combined. Very interesting. He was actually second three times on the spin in in maiden and novice hurdles, close second as well. And he was given he was given a mark of 133. Then the three horses that beat him are rated 131, 130. 134 and 135 uh so having gone back down to a mark of 123 he's dangerously handicapped especially for especially for a 20 to one shot it's easy enough to say that uh, you know on his form he's one of the best handicapped horses in the race uh and it's interesting trainer, trainer david pipe he only had 44 winners last season he only had 33 2017 18 season uh we've only just approached november he's already had 30 at a strike rate of nearly 20 percent so he's been going really really well this season uh and if Nordic combined is as well as uh, as many of his horses seem to be, then he's got a massive chance. Yeah, so two of them agreeing there, G Rod. I, I like did you, they leave you out too. I think that novice form's very good. Again, he's not the most sort of trustworthy horse, but I think back at Ascot, as Keel mentioned, he'd be the one for me, but not a strong opinion. Do you have a strong opinion? No, I don't have a strong opinion. I think it's a really interesting race. Um, mm. And before I give my selection, I must just say that I, I, I had this down to three horses and two of them were Div Day Leave You Out 2 and Nordic Combined. Oh, there we are. Both already been tipped up by the boys, but um, uh, that's not the horse that I'm going to tip because I came down on the, the other of the three. Which oh, that's was lucky. Jolly's Cracked It, um, who won um, over the course and distance first time out last season. Um, and uh, he, he just loves Ascot, like uh, Kill says. I mean, did they leave you out too? Might be a bit of an Ascot horse, but we know that Jolly's Cracked It yes. is an Ascot horse. He absolutely loves it around there. Um, and uh, he must go f- go fresh. You know, that that's when you have to catch him now. So the fact that um, Harry Fry is running him here first time out suggests he'll be uh, spot on for this. The only thing is, uh, probably at his age, I mean, I think he's uh, 10 rising 11, something like that. I mean, he probably is going to want a bit of soft ground to slow down the um, pacier uh, quicker types, younger types in the race, but there is some uh, rain forecast, and I think if Ascot gets the rain, then Jolly's cracked it can win first time out again for Harry Fry and Sean Bowen. Okay, so horses for courses then for that handicap hurdle. Uh, let's move on to the 320, which is the Sodexo Gold Cup handicap chase. Now, this has to be one of my favourite races the whole weekend. I can't wait for this. Uh, Vindication is at the top of the market. I know one of our lads is really keen on him. We've got the likes of On the Blind Side, who beat Torquay's Cheap before he won that Bet365 Gold Cup. You've got Larry, who's an up-and-comer for Gary Moore. You mentioned earlier you like Gary Moore horses uh, at this meeting, G-Rod. Mr Malarkey, if this is a prep for the Labrook Strafe, we'll have to see. And so many other really interesting, talented horses down there as well. So I can't wait for this one. Run us through the market and your selection. Uh, yeah, Vindications are 92 favourite at the moment. Mr. Malarkey, 6 to 1. On the blind side, 6 to 1. Springtown Lake, 8 to 1. Black Court, 10 to 1. Larry, 10 to 1. Go Conquer, 12 to 1. And 14 to 1 bar. Uh, yeah, we spoke about it earlier. Um, I'm very certain Vindication here. I know Graham is as well. Off a mark of 151. Just every way he slices his form from last season, he just looks really well handicapped. Like if you go back to his novice hurdle form as well, he was beaten champ in a novice hurdle at Ascot. Um, and then last season, obviously, his form ties in at loss of translation and Defi Desai, which I said earlier, I think is, is the strongest novice chase form coming into this season. Um, he just got, it basically in stand down, he went off favourite to beat the two of them. He just got outpaced turning for home, but stuck it on. Stuck out really well, in my opinion, uh, looking like he was crying out for three miles, which he obviously gets here. He then went to the JLT. I think he had an interruption, but he, he went to the JLT anyway, despite his trainer saying he doesn't want to go left handed. And he actually shaped very well. Like he was bang there at the second last with a chance before again getting outpaced a little bit and the front two pulling away from him. But um, yeah, back over three mile here at a right-handed track of 151, as I said, with that JLT form looking so strong, I think he'd be very difficult to beat. Kim yeah. Bailey, obviously, is a sport. He's a, his horse is really well forward. I think his run to form is around 90% or so. So yeah, it's a vindication for me. It'd be very sweet on him. Okay. Uh, as you'd say, I mean, great form from last year. I think... The main thing for me is he's been crying out for this three-mile trip by the looks of it, hasn't he? Just staying on at the end of those good contests, but uh, always been a really highly rated horse vindication. Uh, G. Rodden, you agree? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is one of the best bets of the day, vindication. I mean, I think he's got, got grade one potential over three miles. Where would you go with him after this? What sort of horse do you see him as? Well, yeah, I, mean, I think he could be a gold couple. I really think he could be that good. I mean, last season, he looked superb when he won over the course at the in the Noel Novices Chase yeah. over two and a half. 
um, on soft ground. And then he, he went on, and I think he was a red-hot favourite to win the um, race at Sandown, the Silly Isles, and um, he just wasn't quick enough. Uh, he didn't jump quickly enough. That was the biggest problem, was when he hit you, when he come to his fences, um, you know, he wasn't quick enough over them to stay mm. with Deffy de Soy and lost in translation. But, I mean, there's absolutely no disgrace in that at all. And he did remarkably well to stick with them. I mean, if you watch the race back, he is under pressure, a long way out of indication. Yeah. He doesn't have the speed that those two had. And he, he, he really tries his heart out. Then he gets to within two and a half lengths of... Um, lost in translation, who finished second behind Deffy de Soy. And I mean, that form is absolutely red hot because they went then went on to compete at Cheltenham and obviously fill the first two places in the JLT in which uh, vindication was fifth, as Niall has already said. That is not really um, his course vindication. Um, but, he, you know, he, he still ran very, very well. The fourth was Kildasar, who came out and won um, a hot handicap chase over three miles at Aintree. The form is absolutely rock solid. I'd be amazed if this horse isn't rated a heck of a lot higher than 151 come the end of the season. I'm, I don't know, in mid you know, mid 160s, I think, by the end of the season. And, and I think vindication is is a great bet in this race. He just looks like a grade one horse in a handicap. Yeah, strong, strong words then from G. Rodder. Keels, are you going to be taking vindication on or do you share the lad's confidence? I'd be interested to see how he goes and how he's how he's ridden because he won't be used to a field this big. I mean, I know he won a 13 run and novice on his debut uh, over fences, but it was it, it was from the front. And I'm not sure you're going to be wanting to dominate an 18 run a field uh, over three mile round Ascot first time out. Now, you know, I do think he's, Definitely got um, the potential to improve uh, for the step up in trip. Uh, but I take him on. I think Larry's uh, fairly well handicapped. I think he had a good season last year, despite some despite some jumping issues. He started with the fourth at the, uh, in the novice race at this meeting when he gave vain chase to a horse that was already, that, that was probably, uh, well, went on to prove to be about £20 ahead of his mark at the time and was fit. Um, but he just carried on improving after, after that. He won at the end of last season. He was he was a next second to Bob Marlow and stepped up to uh, three mile at Newbury um, in March. Uh, I definitely stayed that. The winner went and bolted up next time and is about £12 higher now. Uh, so I think that's fair form. Trainer says, I need to get a win into him before he goes for the Ladbrokes Trophy. Don't think that's absolutely true because I think he'd get in off one four three anyway. Uh, but obviously Gary Moore's won two of the last three run into this and I thought 10 to 1 was fair enough. There are so many young, uh, potentially very progressive horses in this that you'd you'd have to think some of the older guard w are going to struggle. And um, I mean, Black Corton will have to run out of his skin to win this other mark of 163 because there must be four or five horses that could easily be £10 and more better than their marks in this. Yeah, exactly. I share your thoughts on Larry. I really, really like him. That that win at Sandown, he, he got the job done. I thought that was an excellent ride that day. And the trainer has always thought an awful lot of him. I'm not 100% if he is an out-and-out out stayer, though, so I'll be keeping an eye on him on this to see if he really sees it out. Uh, Mr Malarkey, I like for the Labrooks Trophy, so again, it'll be a watching brief for me, but I'm really excited for this. Uh, as you said, Kiel's plenty of potential lurking and uh, be interesting to see who comes out on top. We'll move on to Down Royal now, though. The 225, the Labrooks champion chase, the grade one there over three miles. Delta Work, again, another one of those really talented novices from last season, third in that RSA, reappearing here. He's coming up against the likes of Klander, Zobo. Paul Nichols, of course, excels with the horse he takes over to down roll, a 50% strike rate. I think 11 winners from 22 runners speaks for itself. We have Road to Respect, Snow Falcon and Alpha de Zobo also engaged. Uh, Niall, who is your favourite? Uh, yeah, Delta Workers are 13 8 favourite, Matty. Uh, Clan de Zobo is 2 to 1, Road to Respect 7 to 2, Snow Falcon 6 to 1, and Alpha de Zobo is 14 to 1. Okay, G, what are you going to get stuck into anything here? Well, it all, all, all obviously depends on just how ready Clan de Zobo is first time out. I think that he's got the best form in the race um, quite comfortably. Obviously, Gordon Elliott says if he's got a gold cup horse in his yard, then it is Delta Work, and he was wildly impressive. Uh, when he won at Punchestown, um, and the form of the um, RSA looks fairly strong. Santini on top of the game um, are quite useful, but he does have to improve to beat Klander Zobo, and I just still think that Klander Zobo could still be improving himself. I mean, he, he made massive strides last season, didn't he? I mean, I was doubting him whether he truly stayed the trip, but he proved that no, no, um, to no, no doubt when he won at um, Ascot over over the, the distance. He absolutely hacked up that day, um, and. Um, I think Clander's Oboe will win, but 
you know, how, how ready are Paul Nichols' is? I was going to say, does that worry you? Because, I mean, I went to Chepstow, the Silver Trophy meeting. Quite a few of his seem to blow up there. A few have sort of sort of endorsed my view on that since of travelling really well and then just blowing up a little yeah, bit. I, 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 I was doing a, one of the stable tour expert views with, with Ben Newton a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, he was saying he, you know, Paul Nichols has said his horses just aren't quite there yet. You know, they're, mm. not, they're not right 100% fully fit you know so they they are going to come on for the run but like you say I mean he's got a great record with his runners in Ireland Paul Nichols would he be sending Clanders Oboe out, out there half fit maybe he would maybe he wouldn't I'm pretty sure Delta Work will be fairly straight because Gordon Elliott will probably want to get a good idea of just how good Delta Work is in relation to um, Clanders Oboe but um, I mean if Clanders Oboe is fit then he would be my idea of a bet. Okay uh, Niall do you see it between those two? Uh, no, uh, I'm actually going to side with last year's winner, Road to Respect, uh, for Noel Mead, who was his horses really forward, as he always does at this time of year. Yeah, just the thing with Clandis Obo, as you were saying, some of Nichols, it's been mixed. Like Some of them have run okay first time, some of them have clearly needed the run. Clandis Obo clearly needed his first run last year in, in the Betfair Chase. I know he ran all right, but I just have a, like, a niggly feeling he might need this. Um, yeah, he's a little bit disappointing towards the end of last season as well. Uh, Delta work. If he's properly forward, I do think he's the best horse in the race going forward. But road to respect, he obviously won the race last year, as I said. Um, he's been freshened up after a break. I, I think at the prices, I'd probably just side with him. Yeah, he tends to excel at this time of year, doesn't he, road to respect? So it could well be the time to catch him, as you say, won this race last year. And Keels, the final say goes to you. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what Delta Works doing his favour. He's the one with the most to prove. I know he was he's in his second season chaser, so he's going to be rated lower than the others. But you know, he, he you know he's he, you know, on figures. The only Snow Falcon is wor is worse than him, really. Uh, and uh, uh, I do think he has a, a, a little bit to prove. Um, Clanders Obo, you would be worried a little bit about the Nichols form. He has won this race four times, uh, but they do seem to be on the slow side uh, this year in, in in sort of coming to themselves. And Rose of Respect has won first time out last. Last three years won this race by 16 lengths last year it was nowhere near as good as it, a race as it is this time um but i do think he's very much the, you know he's the one that's going to be bang ready he's not going to be winning a gold cup mm. this probably is his gold cup uh and he's going to be he's going to be fit as a fiddle the others won't be doing that much between between any of them uh, uh and if the other two aren't fit he'll win okay uh, elsewhere on Saturday, we've got action at Newcastle, Ascot, the rest of that card there. Air Down Royal, we've just spoke about there. Big one at Weatherby and Chelmsford. Let's get some other fancies for the week. Uh, the, the weekend, Saturday, we're talking about first before we get to the naps. G Rod. Do you fancy anything? Just got a couple in the in the bumper at Ascot. I do like to back newcomers in bumpers. And Warren Greatrex won this bumper last year. And he runs Calvario, who's his only entry in the race. Just noticed there's a lot of speed in the pedigree. It's a half-brother uh, to a mile winner. Um, so uh, shouldn't be lacking for pace anyway, Calvario. Uh, obviously, Greatrex uh, does well in bumpers. And then I can't leave without throwing win it, one in at Chelmsford in the evening, 6.30. Uh, I'll have another for uh, Mark Johnston, who kind of fits my Mark Johnston uh, profile. I like to follow the market with Mark Johnston runners in staying handicaps, and uh, he's got a couple in here with Rochester House, uh, who also looks to have a, a big chance. But I'll have another. Um, there's actually one at the course. He won over seven furlongs at the track uh, last season. He's improved uh, significantly for a step up in trip, um, and I think he can bounce back to form. Uh, that is in the 6.30 at Chelmsford. I'll have another. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Niall, where have you been out and about? What do you fancy at Saturday? Uh, I just have won, but it's very interesting. It's in the 12.25 ask card. It's called Dorking Boy uh, for Tom Lacey. If you go back far enough to, to his debut in a bumper, he absolutely bolted in winning by six lengths at Market Raisin. He then went to the Punchestown champion bumper and was well beaten. He was just a little bit out of his depth behind Tornado Flyer, but that was a very good race. And things just haven't gone his way since. He's obviously had some breeding issues because he's had two wind ups. The latest just comes before this run. So this is his first run after his second wind up. He just caught my eye a couple of times, particularly a few starts ago at Ludlow um, when running a nice race. Uh, he's off 112 here with Stan, Stan Shepard booked in a, in a conditional jockey's handicap hurdle. And he's one of the best jockeys in it. So yeah, that's Dorking Boy. I think he could be very well treated. That's my only one though. 
Okay, one under the radar for Niall. Kiels, how long is your list? Uh, it's only three. Uh, it's funny, I've got one under the radar in the same race. Uh, very interesting horse uh, of Harry Whittington's called Rebel Leader. Only a five-year-old, won a point in March, uh, has run twice over hurdles and been given a handicap mark of 110. Uh, those runs, uh, one was over two mile, two and a half furlong, then he got dropped in trip to two mile. Uh, and finished second, actually showed improved form, but his pedigree and everything about him tells you that he wants a trip, uh, and he's going up three and a half furlongs in trip now, and I think that'll suit him down to the ground. Uh, and then I've got two at uh, Newmarket, 205, the Horace Hill. Uh, obviously, um, Ralph Beckett, well, Rafe Beckett was going to run Kinross in that uh, at Newby last week. It sends him up to the um, to the Futurity instead at Newcastle to Group One, but he got an able deputy, I think, in Tom Frey, who won a, a nursery there off um, uh, off top weight uh, at the other at the most recent Newmarket meeting. And I think I think it's it's a bad Horace Hill, and you know, it's not it wouldn't be unusual for a, for a handicapper to come through and win a race like that. Um, obviously, likes the track and the ground. And in the 4.15 at Newmarket, Dance Diva, just a horse I've been keeping an eye on. Um, Back to her last time. She did. She, she won everywhere but the line, unfortunately. Um, she's only up two pounds. She seems to be in the form of her life at the moment. And she's well handicapped on her old form. Brilliant. Thanks, Skills. That was another meeting I missed off my list. Uh, so Newmarket rescheduling some of those juvenile races as well as Newcastle this evening. Now it's time to get those naps. This will not be beaten. I've got a feeling I know who it is, G-Rod, but uh, go for it. <laughs> Me and Niall were, were clambering over who could have it, but uh, 320 at Ascot, Vindication. You're sticking with him. I've given you the first word. <laughs> Niall. Uh, yeah, it would have been Vindication, but I'll just go 245 Ascot and Nordic combined instead. Okay. Uh, and Keels. Oh, they've left Oak Vintage to me then. That's great. I'll have that. Oak Vintage 120 Weatherby. I think uh, that will be, I think, is that, is that the first race on uh, ITV? Uh, I think it's 6, 7 to 1 now. I think, the it, I think it'll be... 135, is it that? No. Uh, no, it's the 120. 120 Weatherby. 120 Weatherby. The first race on ITV, I think it will be end up being a well-backed and winning favourite. Okay, excellent. We'll take a quick break now before we have a look at a very good contest on Sunday and also some Breeders' Cup tips. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply 80 plus BeGumbleAware.org Welcome back to this final instalment of the Tipping Postcast. Now, I mentioned Sunday's very good race. That's at Carlisle, the Colin Parker Memorial Intermediate Chase, over two mile four, listed race. And a lot of people are going to be interested in it because Lost in Translation is making his seasonal reappearance. If you know me at all, you know he's a big, big favourite of mine. And Niall, I think you're pretty keen on him as well, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I've obviously backed him for the Gold Cup. Now, he, I think he's going to go for that... Uh, the the bonus um the only race to be slightly worried about is the the haydock race if he runs into the soft ground and bristol demai but yeah i think he's, he's got a cracking chance in the gold cup anyway yeah i certainly agree with you on that one uh and g rod just a quick word on this before we get your sunday selection yeah i thought it was obviously a cracking race uh lost in translations the most exciting runner in the race but just um, should add kill disart count maribel and my old gold the other three yeah i mean it wouldn't surprise me if count maribel uh, ran very well against the, the the two of them i mean it goes well fresh and, and, and was very impressive when winning at the track last season but you know on all known form uh lost in translation should win on his way to uh, better things yeah nice race from this over sort of two mile four tuning him up for that betfair chase as Niall said uh keels any thoughts on this do you think he can get beaten any anyway I think Hildesart's a very good horse, you know. Um, obviously, that handicap win was a, was a really good run at uh, Aintree last year. He was he was another one, a bit like Lost in Translation, running over the wrong trip all the time, and then comes out and wins a really competitive handicap at Aintree. I mean, I think that's a race that uh, that a previous Ladbrokes Trophy winner has won. I uh, can't remember the name of it, Elian William, Evan Williams thing a few years back. Um, but, um, you know, I... I think Lost in Translation probably has a bit more pace for the trip. They both want three mile, really. Um, but I would not rule out Kildasar in the, either in the Labrooks Trophy or developing into a, a, a Gold Cup contender, at least, because I think he's fairly decent. Yeah, he is, certainly. It shouldn't be an easy task for Lost in Translation, that's for sure. Now, Keels is still mulling over Sunday, so he hasn't got any selections, but you have, G-Rod. Yeah, uh, in the 
220 at Huntingdon. Uh, it's a two mile handicap chase. Just caught my eye that Rock on Rocky uh, is running. He's an old favourite. Um, I think he was rated in the mid to high 130s at his peak. Um, and he's obviously not uh, at his peak anymore. He's 11 rising 12, but he's gone down to a mark of just 110. So he's uh, dangerously well handicapped if he can find his peak form. And I thought he shaped as though uh, he was coming back to form last time out. He finished third at uh, Utoxeter um, and he was bang there for a long way uh, before shaping as though he would improve for the run. So um, that was a promising enough run from Rock on Rocky to make me think he might be able to cash in on a falling mark in the 220 at Huntingdon. Fabulous and uh, Niall. Uh, yeah, I just have one. It's called Scotch Town. It's running the 340 Carlisle. And Nigel Twiston Davis has just been going so well to start the season. And this is just a typical type of horse. He's not that appealing when you look at his form, but I think he'll just win this. Um, he's got top weight, but a mark of 125 is beyond him. So yeah, that's Scotch Town 340 Carlisle. Thanks very much. Now, if you were tuning in for Monday's show, you know Tom Collins was very excited about the Breeders' Cup. Now, we're going to throw to our sponsors at Paddy Power. Tom Nugent and Sean O'Sullivan have had a good look at the card. Here's what they had to say. You are very welcome along to what is a very much impromptu Breeders' Cup preview. I'm Tom Nugent and joined on behalf of Paddy Power with uh, Sean O'Sullivan, who's Head of International Racing Trading here at Paddy Power. Sean, a massive weekend for the international desk on the trading floor. Uh, Breeders' Cup, a massive highlight. Absolutely, it's our Cheltenham, it's our Royal Ascot all rolled into one, so really looking forward to it. Yeah, busy weekend ahead. We're going to rattle through a few of the highlight races. Uh, we'll kick off with the Juvenile Turf. Uh, as we record, it is Wednesday, about lunchtime Wednesday. Paddy Power are still non no, no, no bet on uh, all our Breeders' Cup prices, so the prices are, of course, subject to change. But Arizona currently tops the market at 2 to 1. Decorated Invader next in at 9 to 2. 6 to 1, Structure of Vitology, 7 to 1, and it's 10 to 1, and bigger the rest. Um, Arizona tops it, has had a very busy season. This will be his seventh run of the year uh, in his third country. Uh, so, busy, busy all year for a two year old. Will he be over the top or? Do you fancy him? Um, look, he obviously has a standout form behind Pinatobo, standout for the rest of these, but I'm just going to take him on here. He's drawn in 12, not ideal around Santa Anita. It's, the first, it's a short run to the first bend. He was beaten in the race last year with Anthony Van Dyke. So we're paying four places here in Paddy Power. With that in mind, we're going to look at an each way bet. A horse called Vitalogy. Um, used to be trained by Joseph O'Brien, is now with Brendan Walsh in America. Ran two really nice trials for this one, just crying out for a draw on a trip. Two starts to go at Woodbine. It just got locked in the straight, and last time it was drawn 14 and got a death sentence. Trainer Brendan Walsh, due a reverse in fortune. He had a really good chance in the juvenile. That's been ruled out by injury, so hopefully he's the one to go on here. So Vitalogy to get uh, the Qatar racing team off to a flyer in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, we'll look at the Breeders' Cup juvenile Phillies turf next. Uh, that's, of course, non run on bet as well. Albigna currently tops the market at 7-2. Alongside now, Daya, uh, Sweet Melania, 7-1 next in, and it's 10-1 and bigger the rest. Now, talk to me about these top two. Albigna seemed a very good effect in France in the pre-Marcel Boussac on soft ground. But Daya is a filly who's kept her form quite well through the year. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I think this uh, represents a really different test for Albina from the Marcel Boussac. It's a sharper track on firmer ground. So I definitely have Daya on top in terms of those two for Roger Varian. Um, again, we're four places here in Paddy Power. So I'm going to look for something that maybe it's a, a bit more overpriced. And that's in the shape of Cristal. Um, this was a really impressive winner two starts ago, completely blew the start, lost three or four lengths at least, still got there and won, beat a horse called Sweet Millennia who re-opposes today. That's come out in really frank to form at Keeneland Sense, winning a grade two by five lengths. So with that in mind, I'm thinking this could be the one to back each way here. Interesting, very interesting. We'll move on to Saturday night now and we'll take a look at the, at the Breeders' Cup mile. Still non run a bet here. Circus Maximus currently tops uh, the market at 3-1. Got Stormy leads the American charge of 4-1 alongside another filly, Uni. Uh, Space Traveller 8-1 next in. It's 14-1 and bigger the rest. Tell me, what kind of test is it going to be for Circus Maximus from a pace angle? Will he try and force the issue? I know they like to go flat out in America, but... Exactly. You're going to be coming up against American sprinting speed here from the gates. I just don't think he has enough pace to get to where he needs to be in this race to be seen to best effect. Aiden has an awful record in the race. He just really tends to struggle here. It's just such a completely unique test to what you get at Newmarket at the Curra, galloping tracks in Europe like that. So I'm fully going to be taking him on here. 
anything outside that kind of top of the top of the market i see uh true Faller is there of course people might remember him being trained by johnny murta and and the old trucker the eight-year-old swedwa i thought he ran a blinder in keeneland the last day he did but i have serious questions about the form of the race to be honest if there was one flyer to take here i think it might be in the shape of without parole so it's gone to chad brown it hasn't even ran for him yet they weren't going to run it here but it's just been working with a horse called bricks and mortar who's likely to be favored for the turf it's been working so well they've just pitched him in here straight to the deep end so that could be a tip within itself. Very good, very interesting. Next up is the Breeders' Cup Phillies and Mares Turf. Uh, none are none about again. Sister Charlie uh, tops it at even money. 6-1 to one and bigger the rest. Iridessa uh, is the current uh, second fav at 6-1. to one. Uh, But Sister Charlie seems to have kind of cemented herself as one of the great American turf fillies. Her last six, six runs, all in grade ones and all wins. Um, yep, correct. I think it's a shame we've lost Magical here, but it's only a shame because we would have got a bigger price on Sister Charlie. I think she's an absolute rock-solid certainty here, has all the conditions in her favour, has been aimed exclusively at this race, has a pacemaker in her fur here. I don't think the Europeans are up to her level in this kind of test, so I'm all in Sister Charlie, absolutely. Anything to hit the frame at a bigger price at all? Could Bills and Brooke pull it out of the fire, or do you think it's going to be too sharp for her? Uh, too sharp for her. I think Castle Lady could be the one to maybe side with each way here. Um, the Diane winner was off since. Ran a really nice trial for this at Keelan behind a decent filly at Chad Brown. Should is really entitled to come on for that run. An extra furlong should suit her, so she'll love the ground, so she'd be the one, if anything, to take it on with. Lovely stuff. Well, moving swiftly on then to our the penultimate race we're going to take a look at here is the Breeders' Cup Turf non no, no, no bet again. 7-4, to four, the top two. Anthony Van Dyke, the Derby winner. But Bricks and Mortar seems to be a very, very interesting American-trained horse. He is. He's been an absolute machine. Um, he was a decent three-year-old then, had loads of problems, and came back in January, won the Pegasus, has rattled off a number of wins on the bounce since. The trip's the big question for him, though early in his career, the trainer suggested he would not get a mile in four. He's changed his tack sense, he's training well, but I have a sneaky feeling they're running this in the wrong race and he should be in the mile. Do you think old Persian could come into the picture here? Yeah, he'll love conditions. He um, was a really good winner in Dubai. Didn't go his way in the UK sense, but came back and won a trial for this at Woodbine the last day. Well, a trial was a grade one, but the level of form he ran to there probably just wouldn't be good enough here. So I come round to Anthony Van Dyke. He was a decent derby winner. The derby might not have been the strongest, but he ran a really nice race in the Champion Stakes at Leopardstown when possibly undercooked. He gets back to 12 furlongs here on his favourite firm ground. Aidan speaking very well for him, so he's the one I'm going to side with. Very good. We'll move on to the final race of the Breeders' Cup weekend uh, and, and the feature race, the $6 million purse at uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic. 7-2 to two at the top of it, McKinsey, 4-1, to one, Vina Rosso, Code of Honour alongside at 4s, 11-2, a late 6-1 to one, and bigger the rest. Big storyline here, McKinsey, Mike Smith, after riding him on all his 13 starts, got jocked off by the normally cool as a breeze, Bob Baffert. Yeah, very strange. Obviously, something's going on behind the scenes there. He's taken them off the juveniles before that as well. So um, I think it's a bit of a divorce there between the Breeders' Cup power couple. So it's definitely an interesting side note. Um, on McKinsey, I love the horse. He's definitely the most talented in the race, but cannot have him here. He's zero from three at the track this year since they made it deeper for safety reasons. He's zero from two at the track. Was beaten in the trial for this at fives on, so I was definitely looking elsewhere. What, what, what does look like a, a, an outsider for you or it's, the alternative? It's a wide open race. There's only 11 runners. We're going four places in your Paddy Power shop. But I can't go away from the chances of Vino Rosso. He's won over course and distance this year. He beat a horse who had previously beat McKinsey, so the form was working out there. He, was, he beat Code of Honour at Belmont in his last start, was thrown out in the stewards' room. It was an awful decision. Code of Honour was never going to go by him. So I think he's the one who's rock solid should relish this test. Very good. Anything else to keep an eye out for on all the other races on, be it Friday night or Saturday night? Yeah, I think Dennis Moment's probably one of the better bets in the meeting in the juvenile. He looks like an absolute superstar. I'll be keeping an eye on him as a three-year-old, hopefully going towards the Kentucky Derby. I think Mr Money in the dirt mile had everything go wrong for him in his, in his prep for this and back to his favourite mile. I think he could be very dangerous. And just a special to note, um, Aidan O'Brien is now 0 from 42 in his last 42 starts in the US. We're 9-4, to four. he has no winners at all here in draws a blank. Could be an interesting one just to get on for the weekend and tick them off as they get beaten. Very interesting. That's an interesting angle, actually, yeah. just to touch on that, because would you would it be fair to say that Aidan O'Brien horses are generally over at the Breeders' Cup? Um, possibly so, yeah. Look, he's obviously had plenty, plenty of winners. He's one of the most successful trainers, but for whatever reason, it hasn't really been working out for him over the last couple of years, so that could just be one to, to be on for the weekend. Very good. Your own nap? For the, for the weekend? Uh, the nap comes on the Friday night, you just mentioned there, Dennis Moment in the juvenile, he looks an absolute monster. Um, we've lost one of his um, big rivals, 
and the Baffert horse that takes him on looks like he has temperament issues. I don't think he wants to fight, so I'm expecting, fully expecting him to win the juvenile. Lovely stuff. My thanks indeed to Sean. There you have it, the latest takes from the International Racing Desk here in Paddy Power ahead of the 2019 Breeders' Cup Festival. The Breeders' Cup then, it's going to be an excellent couple of days of punting and keels. You've picked one out for us. Who is it? Yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, you know me and, and, and American racing. I don't like the dirt, but, but um, and I can't pretend to know that much about the American horses. But I did think that Space Traveller was sort of tailor-made for the Breeders' Cup mile, and it's a double-figure price. Got a draw in stall three. I don't think you can have the ground fast enough. Um, pretty much a career best last time in a grade two at Leopardstown. Needs improving upon again, but he's going the right way. And I'd like to see a horse um, from Britain that's not running on drugs. Uh, he doesn't get Lasix like half the ones that are going over there do. Uh, I'd like to see him win. Um, I think each way, 11 to 1's a fair price. Yeah, he is a good pal of yours. You were very sweet on him when he won at Leopardstown, weren't you? I was, yes. I was amazed by the price. Yeah, okay. So hopefully he can do it again for you. And Niall, you have one as well. I do, yeah. Um, it's more an opinion on the race. It's funny, I actually asked one of, the, one of the international lads to give me a certainty for tomorrow, and he gave me Sister Charlie. So I had a look at it just to see what I back it, and I actually cannot believe how short this is. It's 11 to 10, even money. So I'm going completely against his opinion here. But yeah, it basically beat Wild Illusion and Neck last year, going off 5 to 1. Um, it's run three times this year, and its last two starts, it beat Mississippi, who was trained in the UK by David Simcock, and Awesome Tank, who was with William Haggis. They're, they're the horses it's been beaten, and it's even money here to be like Group One winners, like Iridescent Fleeting. Like those horses wouldn't be mapped in, in Group Ones against those uh, Fleeting and, and Iridescent this year. So yeah, at the prices, I thought Iridescent looked a huge price. She's obviously beaten Wild Illusion a lot further than her sister Charlie did. Yet she's seven to one. Um, Wayne Lorden gets on very well, or he's won. He's won two Group Ones with her this year. Ten furlongs seems her ideal trip. The ground will be fine. I think she'll she'll have a decent position here. But yeah, at seven to one, I thought she looked a good each way, but. I'll probably okay. have a saver on fleet. Oh, sorry, I'll probably have a saver each way on fleeting as well. She just doesn't win enough, but I think she'll definitely frame up. But yeah, I'm just taking on the foul there. Okay, so definitely sort of rooting for the British and Irish home team in the Breeders' Cup then. I know Tom Collins is very sweet on Sister Charlie, so it'd be interesting to see how that one plays out. And G Rod, you've got plenty of insight for us. Yeah, I mean, my, my knowledge of American racing is limited. but Hey, hey, um, we're saving the best till last. <laughs> but luckily, uh, my, my brother is out there working and, um, you know, he, he came through with some good uh, advice for us last year. So um, he sent me some texts throughout the week. So hopefully his information um, is spot on uh, again this year. So he says that uh, Chad Brown is very keen on his runner in the juvenile turf on Friday. That one's called Structor. Um, apparently Mitole. Mitole looks in incredible shape and is working well. That one runs in the sprint. Uh, apparently, Chad Brown is also very fan he's also very keen and fancies his runner in the mile. It's called Uni. Uh, the only one Tom Collins likes. Does he? The only worry is a wide draw, says Brown, apparently. Uh, in the uh, turf, Charlie Appleby has had uh, seven runners in the Breeders' Cup. Their form figures are 162, 1102. Uh, he's only running one uh, horse all, all weekend. That's Old Persian in the turf. And finally, uh, Bob Baffert is very keen about his runner in the classic, Mackenzie, and the horse looks in amazing condition. Wonderful. I mean, it doesn't get better than that, does it? Well, let's hope they all win. Yeah, are you going to be uh, going into them big time, are you? <laughs> well, I've got absolutely no idea about what most of them are or what their form's like, but I mean, that information is good enough for me. Rock solid info then. Uh, thanks for joining us on this podcast. There has been something for everyone, whether it be Weatherby, Ascot, the Breeders' Cup or elsewhere. I'll see you back on Monday. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. I'm Jose Mourinho. I know a thing or two about being special. English manager of the year three times, special. Winning the little jackpot on Paddy Power Games, not special. Understood, Jose. Yes, someone wins an average £40,000 jackpot every single day. So if you win, don't think you're special. Daily Jackpots by Paddy Power Games. Jackpots must be awarded by 11pm and vary from day to day. Jackpot is shared with other operators available on selected games. T's and C's at paddypower.com. 18 plus